In this demo, we will be measuring a sample of gel coat over fiberglass. The gel coat thickness on the sample ranges from a minimum thickness of 0.20 inches or 0.51 millimeters to a maximum thickness of 0.05 inches or 1.27 millimeters. For this application, we will be using an Olympus 38DL Plus thickness gauge. The exact key presses would be different if you were using a different model Olympus thickness gauge, but the overall process would be the same. For this demo, we will be using a 20 MHz M208 delay line transducer. For measurements involving thicker gel coat, the 10 MHz M202 delay line transducer can be used, but this is fairly uncommon. The first step in solving this application would be to connect the transducer and plug the transducer cable into TR1 at the top of the instrument. Then turn the instrument on. Once the instrument is on, press the XDCR recall key. Then press the down arrow to default single element and press enter. Here you will see the list of default single element transducer setups. You'll notice that there are two default setups for the M208. One has a default setup for metal and is designated with the letter M, while the other has a default setup for plastic and is designated with the letter P. Since gel coat is more similar to plastic than it is metal, we will select the plastic setup. Press the down arrow to highlight DEFP2-20-M208. At this point, you can press the red measure key to recall the setup or press the enter key to see the parameters within the setup. If you press Enter, you will see that the default setup uses a sound velocity for plastic. Since this is similar to the sound velocity for gel coat, we do not need to manually change it. At this point, you can press the red Measure key in order to recall the setup and return to the measurement screen. Now, with the current delay and range settings, we see the first and second occurrences of the interface echo off of the end of the plastic delay line. If you do not see these signals on screen, you should try adding couplant between the delay line and the face of the transducer. Also, make sure the transducer cable is plugged into TR1 at the top of the instrument. Since we are measuring a thin layer of gel coat, we should shorten our range so we have a clearer view of the measurement. To do this, keep pressing the blue Range key until the bottom right side of the screen displays 0.626. If you are using metric units, it will display 6.5. Next, we need to change the delay. Currently, the signal off the end of the plastic delay line, also known as the delay line echo, is being displayed on the far right side of the screen. This will make it impossible to see the echo from the gel coat layer. To change the delay, press and release the second F key first, then press the blue range key. The bottom left side of the screen will now be highlighted. Press the right arrow until the bottom left side of the screen displays 0.22. If you are using metric units, it will display 5.6. Now the echo from the end of the plastic delay line is on the left side of the screen. As discussed in previous slides, for this application it is helpful to use the first peak measurement algorithm. To enable this, first press the Wave Adjust key. This will bring up the setup parameters on screen. Press the down arrow to measurement type. It is currently set to standard. Keep pressing the right arrow until the measurement type is set to first peak. We can now apply couplant to the part and couple the transducer onto the sample. When you couple onto the gel coat sample, notice the polarity of the delay line echo. It appears positive. There are two negative lobes and one singular positive lobe and we always want to measure to the singular lobe of a signal to avoid lobe jumping and unstable readings. To change the echo 1 detection, keep pressing the down arrow until you get to echo 1 detect. You'll notice it is currently set to negative slope. Press the right arrow to change it to positive slope. Now, when you couple on, the gauge is detecting the singular positive lobe of the delay line echo, which is what we want. Next, You'll notice the signals from the gel coat layer are too low in amplitude to be detected. To help increase the voltage response from the gel coat layer, we will increase the voltage used to drive the transducer. To do this, press the down arrow until you get to the pulsar power setting. Then, press the right arrow twice to increase it to 200 volts. 
Now, couple onto the sample again and try measuring on multiple spots. As you can see, we are able to make measurements on some areas of the sample, but we are unable to consistently get readings. To further amplify the signals from the gel coat layer, we need to increase gain. To do this, press the down arrow until you get to TDG slope. Then, while coupled onto the sample, press the right arrow to increase the TDG slope until the first returning echo, representing the minimum gel coat thickness, is being detected. We increase the TDG slope since the signals from the gel coat layer occur under the slanted portion of the gain line. Once you are able to make measurements, it is important to check other spots on the sample to make sure that the first returning echo is being detected and no further adjustments are needed. As you can see, when measuring this particular spot on the sample, the signal is noisy and the gauge is not detecting the first returning echo. Therefore, we need to continue pressing the right arrow to increase the TDG slope until the gauge is detecting the correct signal. Now, the first returning echo is being detected. It is good practice to once again check other spots on the sample to make sure the correct signal is being detected. If you can successfully make detection of the first returning echo on multiple spots on the sample, then no further adjustments are needed, and you can go ahead and calibrate. To do this, we will first press the yellow CalVel key and then couple onto the thick gel coat sample. Once you have a steady reading, press the Enter key. Then use the arrow keys to change the value to 0.050 inches or 1.27 millimeters. Once you have entered the known thickness, press the yellow Cal0 key and then couple onto the thin gel coat sample. Once you have a steady reading, press the Enter key. Then use the arrow key to change the value to 0.020 inches or half a millimeter. Then press the red measure key. As discussed earlier, you'll notice variations in thickness and echo quality when measuring from point to point on the same sample. In many cases, the same gauge that is used for gel coat measurement can also be used to measure total wall thickness. To measure the total thickness of the gel coat and fiberglass sample, we would recommend viewing the fiberglass and composite application guide, where we use low-frequency transducers to make these measurements.